Okay, here we go with some hog videos. We had a pretty good hunt last night. Uh, if you'll uh, look right there, you're going to see eight hogs all lined up. We had three more that were wounded, got into the brush on us. We couldn't find them. Uh, so we sure got eight right there. We're going to start off, I don't know if I've published this one yet or not, but we're going to look at it again anyhow. I think this was a night before. Two shots, two hits. I mean, you can hear them things hit. Trussell puts him down. And... Well, the problem with that is that sometimes they don't stay down. Two of them did. No, he's jumping. He's running. See, that's a different hog. Not the same hog, but. You see, I got him on the run. Here lately, it seemed like I can't hit the darn things when they're standing still. I don't know what the deal is, but anyhow, let's see what this one is. Yeah, come on. Oh, this is our zigzagging hog. I don't know who been out teaching these hogs how to run, but I want you to look close at this. This sucker here is something else. I missed. Everybody else missed. Every time I led him, he'd go to the other way. God dang. Who taught that son of a bitch how to zigzag? You got to excuse the language because... We all missed him. He ain't hit <laughs> we should let him come on. Did you see him zigzag? Yeah, uh, that sucker. I'll tell you. I'll look at it again. If you notice, every time I shoot, he goes the opposite direction. And you got to lead him. I'm on 9 6 power, which means that he's way out there. So, you know, this is something else. I, I ain't never seen one that. <laughs> That lucky. And we had uh, three shooters that night, and he was untouched. Look at there. I'm shot to the left side. God dang. Who taught that son of a bitch how to zigzag? That's something else. I, I just we had. Missed him. He ain't hit. We should let him come on. Yeah. Did you see that's him my zigzag? That's about our zigzagging hog. All right, here we go again. Yeah. Both of them hit. Of course, I can't hit nothing uh, standing still here lately. Trussell is shooting a one-shot wonder. He's having trouble with ammunition. He got one shot, then his gun jams. And uh, that would have been embarrassing because the landowner is standing right behind us. Had we not got that one, we'd have had a hard time living that one down. But anyhow... Hit him on the run. These hogs are tough, tough. I, I'm not much of a 300 blackout, but I guess it's better than a 223. Not a whole lot, but better. Here we go. We got another one here. Yeah. Now, I shot over that hog's neck. My gun shoots about four inches high at a hundred. I thought I hit him because he just went down, but that was all trussle. It wasn't none of me. 
we got up there and mm -hmm. checked him. He didn't have he didn't have a scratch on the neck. So I shot over him. And uh, I think that's it for that. We're going to have a place that I'm going to pause you and show you. We're finding that when these hogs squeal, they're hitting, they squeal. Sometimes they'll draw other hogs that are in the area. I hate seeing animals suffer, but sometimes these hogs laying on the ground squealing to high heaven. If there's another one around, a lot of times they'll come to them. Four point eight power. We're sneaking up. We're not too stealthy. I'm two sixty. Russell's 325. We're walking in a cut hay field, so the only thing saving us right now is all that wind there. We're lucky the wind was pretty good this night. That's been killing us here lately. I did not realize, I griped at Trussell, how come he didn't shoot his right hand hog? I did not realize he couldn't see it. He had a little edge of grass come out. <coughs> yeah. Hit my hog. Oh, shit. Then I shot the I hay the bale. bale. And the hog got away. I think I shot over or under that one. All I know is he wasn't hit. He was a little bit too far, I think. Trussell didn't get him either. Anyhow, it ain't. we did not recover a hog. They all made it into the big grass. Didn't get nothing out of that. We went and looked, too. I thought I had two of them in there, but there might have been. We just didn't find them. That stuff was head high. This is all the same field. We'd shoot a couple hogs, go around to the other side, and there'd be a couple more. Darndest thing. And you'll see why the rancher is actually in this field baling hay. And it's, what, 9.32 at night. Something about Pulsar right down here on the bottom. They've got the time there. So you know what time it is. They don't have the date, but... I can live with that. We're shooting at the wrong end. All right, let's get him. No, let him turn. We don't want to shoot him in the butt. We no, we won't get him then. He'll sure run off. Yeah. If I'm on nine, nine power, four. he's way out there. Now, let's get him. No. Now. Both those hit. I'm going to stay on him. Ain't going to be no more of that running. It's funny how you can really tell those bullets hit. Now, I think this is the kicking hog. See how he's kicking there? He's, he's also kicking. squealing. Yeah. He's squealing to high heaven. Get ready to shoot. 
I'm waiting for him to get up. He's behind one of those wind rows. Off to the left. You're going to see that he draws another hog out of that hay grazer. That's what bothers me. All that kicking. Must have shot him a little bit high. Yeah, he better hope he don't stand up. All right, there's the other hog right there. He's yeah, coming to him because of all the squealing. Yeah, it's much clearer on that lower power, yeah, but I good. can't hit as good. I can't hit nothing standing still. They got to be running. I don't know where you're at. He's down. Now you heard me say I don't know where he's at. Draw another one. That hog. I couldn't swing anymore. I didn't know where he was at. Came out to the left. We're hunting at night. And Trussell was on my right, and I didn't know exactly where he was at, and I didn't want to swing into him and shoot him. So that's where you got to trust your hunting partners. I will think you need to check that. You don't need to swing in. It's dangerous at night, and I let the hog go, and he couldn't shoot. Remember, he's having ammunition problems. I've got a video here in just a minute of us dispatching that wounded hog. I'll show you that in a minute so I don't get confused on these. The right hand pig. Now, this particular thing here, I kept telling Trussell, you need to get the right hand pig. Uh, Trussell's always usually on my right. Because he's left-handed. But anyhow, come find out. He couldn't see. There's hay grazer right here. So he couldn't see there either. So this is why I chose this pig. My pig's down. That's two I got. We didn't recover that one. I don't know. I got two of them, but I only got one down. Trussell didn't get his down. See, there was two pigs here to the right. Huh? Oh, no shit. I didn't even think about that. See, now you can see the edge of that grass. I'm lined up over here. I can see that hog back in there, but he's over here. He can't see it. That's why he didn't shoot it. And I didn't realize that till, till later. But anyhow. I don't guess that, but that's a good excuse. All right, here we go. Now, this is what I want to tell you about Pulsar scopes. All the trail scopes have this Stadia rangefinder. Now, I was asked about the LRF here a while back, and my answer was that, yeah, for what little it cost, it's a really handy feature. But the deal is, if you don't have that, and you got a trail scope, you got this. And this lets you know the range. I'm looking at a normal size hog. And you can see when it goes here, this is at his feet, that's at his back. He's 155 yards. That's a good way to kind of tell how far they are. Very few people, except me, well, even me, I hardly ever use it. And if you put your menu on that item, all you got to uh, tap, I use the remote on all of mine. If this was an elk and this was at his back and that is feet, it'd be 380 yards. If this was a jackrabbit and this was at his back and that is feet be 66 yards 
but this is a hog so that's that's your range that's you know get used to that it comes in pretty darn handy now the LRF which is the laser range finder I've got that on a night vision, and it's great. I mean, it calculates, I guess, to the foot. I mean, it'll tell you exactly. But if you don't have that, that is exactly what this Stadia range finder is made for, is to give you a little range. Hard to do at night because you can't see landmarks. You see how I adjust that? Now, I've adjusted it down a little bit. Now it's telling me that hog is at 190 yards. And his back is not quite up here. And I'm a little bit high for his feet. But that's going to be real close to 190 yards. You've seen me adjust it. So here we go. All right. We don't want to shoot for 190 yards. I have trouble killing them at 100, so we're going to scoot up a little bit. If you buy something for hogs, don't get a 300 blackout. They're just not more powerful enough. The only thing bet, uh, worse than that is a 223. Need a 308. Trussell has a little better luck with his 6.5 Grinnell, but not, to me, not fantastic amount more. All right, here we go again. We'll see how far this hog is. Yep, still a little far. I mean, that's what this is for, and it works good as long as you have a normal size hog. Now, if you're arranging an armadillo, it'll show you that it's hog way out there, but this really works real well if you have a bunch of hogs that you can tell what the little ones look like and tell what the big ones look like and pick you an average size hog, it'll give you the range real close. Now we are ready for the victim. It's hard for me to remember all these shooting incidents. I'm zooming in. I don't want to miss him. Yeah. Look around. The reason I'm saying look around is that the hogs that come out. running out, see all that hay, and some of that's not even cut yet. That's the river right there. The cycle. He's still dealing with a single shot. And you can see uh, that scope. <laughs> How much more clear can you get? I just like to zoom in when I shoot. I wish that the PIP would let you keep your native uh, setting. In other words, let me shoot from about 4.6 power and then it be on 9. But unfortunately, it won't do that. If you put the PIP... Puts my base magnification oh, at one something power and lets me amplify the others. And I, I, I can't shoot good like that. I got to have a little amp uh, magnification on mine. Okay, last uh, in scope video. Hope you'll bear with me here and see these. Like I said, these are pretty much all the same night. I wanted to show the Stadia range finder and how it works. It's actually pretty quick. 
you don't always have to adjust it just right to get your range you know if it's pretty close you can see if it almost fits or if it's just way over it kind of adjust it from there or not adjust it but you know your range you know if it's too close too far of course to me it's never too close we're sneaking up it was pretty cool this night too I didn't have my furry cap you know Trussell really likes these furry caps I wish one of his sponsors would uh, make one of them and uh, make him wear it I really do because he makes fun of us me and Brayson, we like those furry caps, and he makes fun of us. But he stands there making fun. Now, see that thing again? Yeah, he's standing there making fun of us having cold ears. If you notice, I told him 160 yards. That's because... Uh, that hog was didn't quite fit in the lines so we need to get a little closer that's just about as far as my dad gum uh, 300 blackout will shoot we'll get up here in a minute and you know I've had things that ones we call super hog I've had a lot of different hogs but this one here would almost qualify as well now you're gonna see my hog run off I thought I missed the first shot I really didn't but you can see how tough these dadgum things are all them hogs and I should have killed two or three of them might have look I'm checking it adjusting 115 now we're ready Waiting for Trussell to get set up. That's what you call wishful thinking. And that would have been good if my hog went down. But unfortunately, I did hit him first shot. And you can tell that. But he did not go down. Still waiting on old Trussell. I done lost my concentration. That was a mistake. Need to hit these hogs a little bit low. Their vitals are real low in their chest cavity. When he does start to count, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not holding my breath for a good shot. Of course, I'm out of breath with all that walking. Yeah, I hit that hog, no question. I hit that, that shot, it. too. Hit that shot. That's three right there. That hog got three bullets God, in him. God, he's still dragging himself off. And he took off. Three I'm rounds in him, shot. and he took off. I wasn't ready. I was weaving. Yeah, I thought I missed, but I didn't. Shoot, I got two more into him. Well, you didn't get him? Oh, yeah. Get enough. Right okay. We that did recover that hog. Did recover him. Now, I told you about the one that was laying there squealing and kicking. This is going to be that video. We go in and put this one down. Oh, we're uh, we're getting ready to put this pig down. We got one that we shot out here. Danny's fixing to dispatch him with his 22. So. So, anyway, 
keep it running, we'll go over and get that other. Yeah. So that's the one that was squealing and drew the other hog. Dispatching as fast as we could here and, and uh we got another one over here, a bigger one that's dead, so we're gonna throw him in with this other one over here and there we go. So that's two. We'll keep it running on over here. So we can find this other one we got down to our left, straight to your left there. Right. right up there. A little bit bigger pig. So uh, this pig shouldn't have run very far. Let me get out. He hit pretty good. So he's good. Yep, so he's got one, two, three in it. Yeah, so uh anyway, this is number four. So we got two there, three, four, two over here in the we got two in the hay field that got in the hay field shot. So it's actually six for the night so far. And as you can see, the uh rancher farmer he's cutting his hay right now and uh they just keep coming out, so we're just going to keep uh, putting them down. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, help Danny load this big one, and thanks for watching. Okay, that's the one that was squealing and drew the big hog to it. Uh, all right, here we go with uh, the last video. Oh. Okay, here we are out here. We're at a landowner's house. We got a call today. Having pig problems. And uh, as you can see, I think we got eight on the ground. We had three run off that we didn't find. But they, we were really putting them down tonight. Uh, a big one right beside me. A poor shooting. A uh, little bit of everything tonight. Uh, I could see them good. My pulsar scope was working good. Trussell's got a new scope. He's going to uh, show everybody. But uh, I don't know if our shooting or my shooting was that good tonight. Trussell was having some uh, problems with his rifle. Uh, we're going to have to figure out why it is. Imagine if he got over one shot. If his rifle was jamming for some reason. And we think it's ammunition related, but we'll figure that out later. But for a single shot and getting all these pigs, we did real good. But that's something I want to bring out. Uh, you landowners, especially, you know, we have many landowners that we're hunting for now. Uh, if you're out like this landowner with uh, baling hay, doing hay grazer and that, if you're out grazing and you've got pigs around us, give us a call. Don't call us the next day. Call us that night because these pigs were ignoring the tractor. And we were able to get up on them in our little mule and uh, really deal them a bad blow tonight. And uh, if you call us that day, it's much better. Two days from the, now, these pigs may be in the next county and we won't get them. Problem is, when you go to plant your corn or your oats or whatever, they're going to come back to see you. So call us that day. Uh, when you're doing that, it makes a big difference. So, you got anything, Brian? No, good night. It's getting late and we're going to call it a night. All right. We thank you for watching. Okay. That's all of that. And uh, that's all for that uh, night. I'm going to tell you one other thing. Uh, I'm not going to put it on screen because that's too much trouble. But we get all of our stuff from Eric Pukacic. He is the owner of JEP Firearms. And uh, Eric is also a uh, 
class three weapons dealer. So he sells the silencers, the fully automatics, you name it. He's got all the toys. But like I said, he's a Pulsar dealer uh, for the thermals and all. And I help him out some on the thermals. Uh, he uh, He's one of those dealers to where if you can't decide what you want, he's probably got one there at the shop, and he'll let you try it on your gun before you actually buy it. Uh, right now, the wait is like seven and a half to eight months to get a silencer. That's why I've been hunting with that 300 blackout uh, for the simple reason that uh, my silencer will not work on a 308. And as soon as I get the uh, silencer in that works, it's going to be a Yankee Hill resonator. I'll be switching back to 308, and you'll see I'll be putting a lot more of these hogs down. So anyhow, that's Texas hog hunting, and we thank you for watching.